Ford. This is Brian Hawkins and Patrick Foreman. Um, they reached out to me because I wanted to talk about um, creativity, the creative process, and their new book, uh, Black Cotton from Scout Comics. And uh, that'll be out. That's this January, right? The 6th? February. Be out. Yeah. Oh, not till February. Okay. So coming up in February. Awesome. And so um, that's my grandma's birthday, so I should remember that maybe. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess do y'all want to kind of give a spiel about what Black Cotton is and what it's about? Go ahead, Brian. You do it, yeah. man. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, so Black Cotton is set in an alternate reality uh, where the social order of white and black uh, is reversed um, and it hinges upon a family, the Cotton family, um, who are wealthy. They are part of the 1% of this reality. Um, and their oldest son, uh, who is somewhat estranged, Zion Cotton, it has um, chosen to be a police officer. And unfortunately, Zion, uh, he tragically and horrifically shoots um, a minority white woman. Um, and that kind of sets off uh, the social disarray and heated climate of of that world and that reality, and that begins our story. Yeah, black eye. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, so I, I was uh, able to read the book. I thought it was really cool because I think it's a pretty like basic concept to be like, uh, what if we explain to other what it feels like to be other by showing them as other, you know. Um, so that could be really simple, but what I really appreciated that you guys did with black cotton here is that you're actually tackling like multiple levels. Cause not only have you flipped the, the, the race of the characters and their hierarchy within the society, but then you also have like this, they're, they're building this empire, you know, like they've worked hard to get to where they're at and stuff. And they're seeing that fall in front of their eyes too. Um, you know, like a kingdom, or uh, I think they refer to it as Olympus is falling, you know? So <laughs> I guess like, why did y'all decide to take on so many things um, in the hierarchy? Is it all connected to one central thing or were y'all trying to kind of broaden the perspective even more? Mm. I think uh, I I'll start and then uh, I'll tag you in, uh, Brian. Cool. I think uh, it, we, we give the illusion that it is all connected. And uh, have you seen the movie Crash? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, it's sort of like that. It, it's sort of like uh, where everything seems to be connected to each other, but in reality, everything is crashing into each other. There are certain things that are linked uh, to the Black Kind family, to the Kind family. I shouldn't say Black Kind family, but the Kind family because their last name is Kind. And uh, there are going to be certain things that are linked straight to uh, the Nightingale uh, family, which is Elizabeth, the uh, young lady who got shot. But then you're going to see that there are uh, what I like to call it, you know, how when you play a video game and uh, all of a sudden there's a side story or a side, you know, uh, just something that you can actually go play that is in the story, but it's not part of the story. Mm -hmm. well, we show you that too, because that's how life is with us. We're connected, we crash into different individuals, but then all of a sudden something will happen that is not part of us, but yet we we understand it or it brings revelation to us or all of a sudden it challenges our perception of how we are viewing our reality. And that's basically what, uh, in a nutshell, we want Black Kind to do. We want Black Kind to entertain people because an uh, entertaining story, it, it, I mean, you know, it's a phenomenal story. But at the same token, we want, uh, we want you to be challenged throughout the entire evolution of this story. We want you to uh, um, identify your implicit bias. Because even while me and Brian are writing this and brainstorming and going through the process, we identify implicit bias that we we have, and then we're conscious enough to remove it and actually just, you know, okay, let's identify that, 
but let's not put our implicit bias into the story. And that's what we love about it. Because if we are doing that throughout the process, then we know the readers are going to be doing the same thing as they go through the process too. And, and in the end, you, you're like, wow, that was an awesome story. But at the same token, I see this from a whole nother perspective, which, mm -hmm. which is the beauty about it. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's really interesting. It sounds like what you're saying is um, you're trying to let the reader discover their themselves, you know, through the story. Um, because I, I definitely feel like what you're saying is true there. You know, they do talk about the implicit bias aspect of it. And when I look at how I felt uh, just reading the first issue there, like, I feel like there's a lot of assumptions I could make about certain characters and certain elements of the story based on what I would assume, you know, but um, instead of just showing the other perspective, but to like let the reader discover it, I think that'll be interesting whenever the the story starts to come full circle. Right. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Spot on. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, it's not, it, it's not much to add, you know, it's, it's, it's perception and uh, six degrees of separation and, mm -hmm. Those are the angles that we are 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 coming from and, and and playing with. So, like, where in the process did uh, a lot of that come along? I mean, where what was the inception of this idea? Was it just like let's turn everything over, or was there a lot more going on that kind of like spawned the whole idea of this story? It, it, it was uh, two folds. I'll I'll start. I normally let Brian tell the story. <laughs> But I, what I'll do is I'll take you back to uh, my mindset before I gave it to Brian or introduced it to uh, Brian over lunch. Um, what I kept seeing uh, in movies or TV shows, what I, what I saw was that it seemed as if they were trying to uh, get people to develop empathy for another culture or another race or a, a situation the, and and for instance like 12 years of a uh, 12 years of slave or um uh the one that uh, uh just came out they got uh this one coming out cracker they got another one spike lee got a movie coming out you know in january and what i see is that they're trying to get individuals to develop empathy through guilt meaning hey i'm gonna show you how you know you did this to us and we want you to feel bad and develop empathy and that doesn't work to me i'll say it doesn't work if i constantly see myself in one position meaning the power position the way that individuals uh, smoothly develop empathy for another individual is they have to be able to see themselves in actually in that person's shoes and it has to be done in a safe environment. It's not an environment where they feel attacked. It has to be an environment where they feel safe, where they can really analyze the situation and truly put themselves in that vulnerable state where they almost live it and then they go through the process so mm -hmm. by seeing all of these uh shows or movies trying to do that i was like well why don't you just flip it you know <laughs> why don't you you know flip the whole thing but do it in a way that people feel safe to do it. So uh, we have a mutual friend, uh, Luke Wright, who uh, who is phenomenal. He's a teacher. He's a writer. He has a book out, uh, The Right Thought, just a phenomenal individual. And he, I was talking to him, and he was like, yo, uh, you need to meet Brian. So he called Brian, and me and Luke, we had did an interview at the church, and we were going to eat. And Brian hit him up and Brian came, you know, and we all just sat down at the table. So, you know me, I'm like a kid in the candy store. I'm seeing Brian and I'm like, yo, I, I need to talk to him. I need to talk to him. <laughs> this is the man right here, you know? So so as soon as I got a chance, I was like, yo, 
uh, here's my idea. <laughs> and so I started just telling him kind of the thought pattern. And all of a sudden, the gears just started turning in Brian's, you know, head. And I was like, in this reality, even the cotton is flipped, you know, it's black cotton. And he was like, yo, that's it right there. That's the name, Black Cotton. <laughs> and I mean, we talked for like four hours at, at the lunch. Then we went back to my house, continued, you know, talking and developing the story. And that was January of this year. And oh, we've wow. been grinding ever since. I mean, uh, we were grinding and it, it's amazing how much we have done so far. Because it seems like we've been doing this for three years. But we just been at it and that's that's where it all began wow that's awesome so where did you pick it up brian what uh what did you do whenever you first started hearing all this well no i mean it's it's exactly how patrick said it you know <laughs> when he said you know like even the cotton is flipped and i jumped I'm like that's it that i mean that's exactly how it went and we just <laughs> you know we just started to build concept from there and you know from where we were eating at to his house, you know, we talked about uh, what, like how we wanted to present the story, you know, what, what we're going to, what was going to be the vehicle to present this reality. And, you know, we developed uh, the, the, the cotton family and, you know, we came up with the names and we began to talk storylines and, um, and just to peel back the layers of what the story would be in order for the story to um, to ultimately uh, be our uh, method of delivery for this reality, this perception, um, this six degrees of separation. And, and that's what it is. The story is our uh, method of delivery um, for this idea uh, and for this understanding and for the edification. And with that comes entertainment. Uh, so, yeah, it was you know it's it's been uh, it, it's been a journey and a ride uh, from from January twenty twenty for sure. Yeah, well, that's crazy. I mean, because you know, obviously, our our country has been tackling something in twenty twenty that's been there forever. Um, it sounds like you guys were working on this even before uh, you know everything really hit the fan at that point. You know, mm -hmm. so um, and, and you know, it's one of those things like. Obviously, it's not something new. It's just something that a, a really big spotlight got put on. Um, but, you know, like, how much did all of that influence? How much did um, everything that happened with quarantine and all the events of the summer, how did that have an influence on this story and what direction it went? It had a great influence. Uh, to put it into perspective is we were talking and as we were developing uh, just the characters, and here, here's what I'll say. Uh, Brian is the genius, you know, out of the two of us. Uh, I'm, I'm a visionary person, but I'm also a great learner. And Brian taught me everything I know. I'm a comic book collector. I've, I've you know, for years have read comic books and collected comic books, you know, <laughs> but for him to take the time out and actually, you know, teach me how to write, format, you know, do everything uh, so that we can actually move forward two times the speed, it, it, it was, uh, uh, that's the genius right there. I take my hat off and, and definitely give up give uh, uh kudos to brian just you know uh for doing it yeah you know but but the pandemic helped us because it gave us time <laughs> it, <laughs> it, it gave him time to actually you know give me uh that those tools needed um uh, the evolution of the events happening in the world it really just gave us a uh, more perspective and items that we're like, you know what? We need to fast forward and put this out now because it's the perfect timing. The world is 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 ready for something like mm -hmm. this. You can't just release something like this anytime. 
it has to be perfectly timed where the world will receive it. And right now with all of the events that happen, and it's crazy, I, I say it's crazy because you would think when one event happened that other events would not you know, uh, also occur, that people would take notice and they would be like, okay, ooh, can't do that. You know, at least let the, the fire die down. But no, we saw it was like a domino effect. And that is, is, is alarming. And that's why this is the perfect timing for Black Con to come out. And the beauty about it is the medium that is coming out in, it is not an attacking uh, medium, but it's a, a medium that people uh, are safe in their own homes or on their computers if they you know get the digital version but they are safe to actually do the whole process and it's entertaining so uh, so so these these events set up black kind to be honest yeah yeah i mean to me like what you're kind of talking about there is like an information gap you know when when everything hit the fan and we like saw it all on TV, you know, a lot of people went, here's something I've never thought about. Here's something I don't know anything about. And now there is people clamoring to get content that kind of explains and teaches those exact things because now they realize there's something, you know, uh, Samuel Jackson with the known unknowns and the unknown unknowns, you know, like people didn't even know that there was like this level of racism and stuff going on. Now that they know that there's something they don't know about, there's this rush to fill that knowledge gap. And right. I feel like that's where something like Black Cotton can do so much, is especially at this time, you know, because people are going to be looking for this kind of thing. And like you said about the medium, you know, like comics, to me, I learn a lot from comics. It Because it's so decompressed, you know, you can spend time looking at a page and you can really put some very dense information into a comic that doesn't, get so well received like on TV or in a movie when it's just moving past at whatever speed the viewer right. is there for, you know? So I think you're, you're very timely with this just because it hits where people are going to be looking for this kind of content and this kind of information because it helps put people in the other perspective and see things from the other side, you know? Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. What you got, Brian? <laughs> I mean, no, it's, I mean, you guys have been so spot on and you're, I mean, you're saying it all, Patrick. I mean, it's, it's, um, oh, wait, first you're way too kind with how you led in with that. Like, I'm, I'm, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, we compliment each other. Uh, you know, we all, we understand each other's strengths and how to play off each other. Um, so where, where, you know, it's all about iron sharpening iron. So, um, you're way too kind, bro, but thank you. Um, uh, it's been great, you know, with the time that we have had to have these incredible conversations. Um, you know, we, we, we zoom up and, you know, we meet through zoom, uh, we talk on the phone, we text and, um, it allowed us to not only to build this story, but to build a very close friendship and you know the friendship and the kinship um is is seen also in the comic and it's you know it's it's in the meaning of black cotton in itself you know we right. we got to develop you know what black cotton uh, means in general um as a mindset um and then we we were like you know that's part of the comic as well so that so this time while it's been a trying time of course and we are definitely aware and sensitive to that um you know we still live in the moments that we have and you know we were fortunate in the aspect to be able to take that time and 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 and, and to build um a foundation and a house a black cotton house um you know for us to give out to the world um with pandemic and the racial tensions that um have been ignited uh in the U.S. So it's uh it's real. I don't want to say cool because I feel like that didn't kind of downplays it. Yeah. But it's, it's 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 amazing to be a part of uh, this team process, and it's amazing that this team process is connecting to something that really is um, at at the heart of 
of the ideology of, of excuse me, at the heart of getting to uh, the true ideology of what it is that America is supposed to be. And that's what black cotton is, 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 is going at the, you know, let's embrace uh, the ideology of what America is supposed to be. Here, here, here's something that I'll say too, uh, Ryan. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of things that individuals are going to uh, see, we're doing that on purpose. We're doing that on purpose because we feel that uh, the challenge is necessary. Just like through uh, me and Brian, our many, many, many conversations, and he'll call me out. You know, well, that's a, uh, you know, you. For instance, I give you an example. Uh, we were having a discussion about Zion and uh, something that we wanted uh, to happen to Zion, and I was protecting Zion unknowingly. You know, I'm protecting him, and uh, Brian just called me out on it. He's like, you. That's your implicit bias right there in action. You don't want to see Zion as a bad person, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and, and I had to look at it. I'm like, wow, you, you know what? You're right. You know, I, I have to take that out so that we can truly write the script. You know, I can't protect him. You yeah. know, I have to let it unfold as it should be. So, a lot of things or images they're going to see, uh, especially on our covers, uh, it is supposed to spark you. It is supposed to uh, challenge you. It is supposed to get you to do a double take and be like, hold up, what? And then take another look at it and go deeper and say, oh, okay. Wow. Didn't see it that way. So, uh, it's going to be good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that really interests me because um, that is something like, um, is there any symbolism to the black and white beyond the black and white? Oh, you're talking about uh, why like, we uh, uh, did it in black and white? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> go ahead, Brian. <laughs> yeah. So that was part of our early discussions. And it's a planned, uh, it's planned black and white with, Great tones for well, of course. I mean, style reasons, but the main is uh, perception. Um, to uh, take color away, um, it's in the tagline. You know, it's in the log line where you know it's just, it's the reversal of social order of black and white. You know, we we never say race black and white. It's it, we're looking at the social order and the construct of what white and black and black and white are, um, which then comes down to sometimes even class systems, and so. By removing the color from the actual page, we're trying to get you not to look at at, at the race, uh, but look at the construct of white and black and what that means to us as a society. Again, perception and the six degrees of separation. And you know, we've been very fortunate with our artist Marco Perigini, who has just been phenomenal in helping us to create this. Um, we have Francisco Zamora uh, that. There's a page with the newspaper on it. You know, he helped to construct that whole page. Uh, we had Jerry Nielsen, who is doing wonderful graphic design work for us. So the whole team and the presentation of the book um, has been central and important. And of course, uh, I'm gonna just shout them out now, Scout and what they've done in yeah, helping yeah. to get there, um, to present it, to publish it. Um, but um, it's just the whole, the whole concept of black cotton from story to page art, um, you know, it's, 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 it's thought out. It's meant it's on purpose. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Well, I can tell you my experience as a reader, um, the black and white to me, I thought was genius because it almost said, um, I don't know, in a way it almost blocks out the black and white, uh, aspect of the issue you know and it, it keeps me very hyper focused on the nuance of the story and the characters and like how you know like the daughter she's doing what's right like she's protecting the family but it also kind of makes her a crappy person to like 
go up to the family and be like, yo, like you need to move on. How much do we have to pay you? You know? <laughs> and to me, like, that's, what's really cool about it is by basically like blocking out black and white, it always makes me watch for the grays, you know? And that's kind of what I'm experiencing as a reader. Whenever I read this, especially the second time, like the first time I was like, okay, this feels like flipped races, you know, but the second time I read it, I was like, but, um, you know, one of the biggest issues between, you know, with our racial divide in our country has to do with um, generational wealth, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I thought that was like a key aspect to the family being a family is it, it made it that much more visceral to really highlight like the biggest difference because that, that tends to be the argument, you know, you can point out Chris Rock or Dave Chappelle is like, well, look, black people are being successful in our modern society, but even whenever you look at them, you can say, but how long have they been rich? And right. where did that money come from? You know, and to me, having a black family um, be powerful and building this generational wealth in the story, it does it instead of flipping the races, you're actually flipping the social order. And that to me is where it got really nuanced and more interesting. And and here, here here's something too that we're gonna challenge people on. Uh, we took out slavery. And that was a, a, a discussion between uh, me and Brian. We, it, it, was a, it was a pretty, and I wouldn't say intense, I would say deep, cause it wasn't yeah. like we yeah. were on different sides. We kind of threw it on the table mm -hmm. and discussed it. And, and we were thinking, you know, pluses, minuses. And then we started uh, talking about, okay, how is this reality? But in the end, what we came to is, you know what? What if we took out slavery and challenged people because there, there's many out there that will hold tight to a certain thing that has happened and it will always be the go-to of why we are in this situation or the place that we are. So... We said, okay, we take that out. Could America still land in the same position that it is? And that's a challenge that we're going to also display in uh, Black Cotton. Um, could America still end up in the same position today that it is today, even without slavery being in its history? And I guess, you know, people will find out uh, um, if that's possible, or they will uh, either agree with us or disagree with us as they go along on this journey. But that is another uh, piece of the pie because it goes back to what you were saying. Uh, generational wealth, people don't understand uh, just that phrase right there. I call it uh, how people say uh, compound interest. I tell people knowledge is the same way. You can have mm -hmm. compound knowledge, meaning, you know, knowledge that is passed on from generation to generation, which yes. it compounds and, and it puts you light years ahead of somebody else who is just getting the knowledge. So um, definitely, definitely. I'm glad you brought that up. Um, yep. But We're going to challenge people and we're going to uh, try to, you know, uh, um, create a nation of growth and a nation of uh, respect because mm -hmm. as you grow, you develop respect for other people, which means that this country can, uh, instead of as it is right now, and, and this is a true statement, it is very divided. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. very divided and it needs oh, yeah. to get back together mm -hmm. and work together so that we can truly, you know, get back to the core of America. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I think what you were talking about there also gets back to your core question of implicit bias, you know, because, um, you know, we assume that, you know, the the difference between paid and unpaid uh, debts, you know, um, and the original sin of slavery, that that's what creates that divide. But when you take that out, could the implicit bias itself be just the color of the skin? And, um, you know, is that what leads us back into this dogmatic circle of getting back to where we started, you know? It's, it's, it, <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, go ahead, go ahead. It, you know, it, it's an interesting question. And it hinges, I, I mean, for, for me and 
you know, it's, it's been part of our deep discussion. Um, and, you know, and, and we landed on the fact that, you know, this story is rooted in the human condition. And when you begin to look at the human condition, which Shakespeare did so very well, which is why his, his plays and, and his words, that literature has lasted for so long uh, and, and is, is, is understood and redone and et cetera, because he tackled the human condition. And, you know, we actually have, you know, can you look at any, any caste system? If you look at different countries, you know, there are all different kinds of oppression. That, that exists without slavery. Um, and so for black cotton, you know, it, I mean, the elephant in the room with black cotton would be, you know, oh, you know, that we're reversing it. So therefore the black people, you know, are the rulers, the white people are the slaves. But what we decided what we landed on is to take that out. And we take that out, as Patrick said, because that's not a crutch. What we want readers uh, to see is, you know, the human condition. And the human condition has implicit bias. It has um, bartering. It has uh, the, you know, what makes capitalism, the ego, um, the greed. arrogance, the greed. Um, and, you know, so how did one culture um, in this reality, um, the, the African-Americans, uh, um, who immigrated over from Africa, how did they become the dominant culture over the European Americans? Um, how did they interact with the uh, Native Americans who were already here? You know, how did they get into this majority position without enslaving? And so once you take, once you examine that elephant, and once you take away that, that thing that really, uh, it's like a knife into American slavery. Um, it now allows you to look honestly at yourself. And mm -hmm. what is the actual root and cause of slavery? It's the same thing that causes all oppression. Um, not just slavery. That is a, uh, a an extension of what that human condition, that problem in the human condition is. Uh, so the, with Black Cotton, you know, uh, as the story goes on, you know, we're going to look at that history, that reality that that we've created, that backstory and that history. Um, and that also will hopefully challenge our perception. And also it will be entertaining, very much like how, you know, any parable or any right. story mm -hmm. Jesus or all the prophets and teachers would teach uh, is, a, is an entertaining story while you are also being edified. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you'll find out how uh, the kinds got to the status that they are, the billionaires that they are. And, and we're just going to peel the onion. And in peeling that onion, you're going to see uh, some of the good, some of the bad, you know, uh, the things that have uh, happened, many secrets that are, you know, uh, within the cotton family is going to all, you know, be uh, revealed as we peel mm -hmm. those onions back yeah and then you might even get some of it in uh those phenomenal covers that we have that uh marco has done that we have on um, marcelo uh santana jr over in uh brazil i mean marco is in uh he's uh in italy right mm -hmm. yeah, i mean that's the beauty about our black kind team we are we are truly a diverse team the comic book is diverse the uh, story line, the individuals bringing this together is diverse. Uh, Brazil, Italy, uh, we're over here in the U.S. It, it, it is phenomenal. Um, and that's why it is so entertaining, too, because we're bringing input not just from me and Brian, but it is a true collaborative effort of uh, international effort <laughs> it, it, it is uh it is going to be enjoyed by the world and that's what we want yeah that uh that sounds really awesome i mean that's something that i want to see unfold more in the story you know and um in the covers and everything just moving the world beyond the scope of where it's at right now in this first issue you know because it's really cool it's a great concept um, but like you said, I think if you take away 
uh, if you take away that crutch or that scapegoat, no longer does it become like, I'm not a bad person because I think slavery is wrong. You know, now you have to face yourself and are you really that good person, you know, because you don't have that scapegoat. So I really like what you're talking about there. And then um, just like the idea that people from around the world are putting this together, you know, it helps it it helps kind of get rid of like that echo chamber, you know, of like, I'm right, I'm right, I'm doing the right thing. This is my perspective. I know everything, you know, but to have it go around the world like that and have other people from outside, you know, some an outsider looking in is always going to have a different perspective and, and catch the things that you get caught in your own little echo chamber in. So that always makes a better product to me if you have, you know, a diverse, diverse cast, you know, that's putting it all together. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Awesome. And we've, yeah. we've been fortunate and blessed to uh, have that with this project. Um, so it's, yeah, it's, it's been a great ride so far. And the great thing is, you know, we're, we're, we're really just getting started, you know, and, and Scout has, uh, you know, put their trust in us, you know, to, to, to start with publishing six issues of this. Um, so, you know, we really feel the love and the backing from them. Uh, to put this story out there and, um, you know, it, I don't want to say this kind of story, but at the same time, I would have to say that, you know, I'm, I'm not sure, you know, if any and every publisher would publish a black cotton um, while it's not attacking and it's not an, an indictment on a race or, or, or a group or, or anything, uh, just the potential stigma um, of doing a social order, quote unquote, white, black mm -hmm. reversal, you know, there's a social stigma that comes with that, um, yeah. where, you know, it's just, a book is judged by its cover, literally. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, they didn't do that. You know, they looked at the, the uh, meaning of it. Uh, mm -hmm. They looked at what the purpose behind it. Um, and, you know, they've put, you know, their backing, their, trust in it and in us, you know, and, and I think that's awesome. Yeah. I was thinking about that actually while I was reading it, you know, because it is such a hot button issue. I was impressed that um, this isn't just like a Kickstarter project that's being put out there because um, scouts really putting themselves behind it. Um, there's this book called second coming and they're like mm -hmm. kind of writing like the whole Jesus story and stuff. Yeah. Right. That was originally supposed to be like uh, Image or IDW or somebody, right? Maybe Dark Horse. So, yeah. Because like all of the attention it got, it ended up going over, I think, to Ahoy. So mm -hmm. um, we've seen where like publishers have taken that chance, you know, and I think it's great to see Black Cotton be one of those kinds of books that like somebody has to take a risk on, but there's somebody in this industry brave enough to do that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well said, and and I think those are very, very, very true words. Um, and you know, it, it, it's. I mean, for me, I don't like to rush time, but I'm anxious for February 10th uh, to to come, and for you know the book to be in the hands of of readers, and for whomever you know wants to consume it to to take it in, and you know for us to hear. Uh, what Feedback. the comic book world, yeah, you know, what the world in general, you know, whoever gets their hands on it, um, really has to say about it. Um, you know, it's exciting. There's some, there's some anxiousness about it, um, <laughs> but it's good stuff, though. Yeah, yeah, and it's always exciting to have these conversations. Mm -hmm. um, and like Patrick said, you know, we were really excited to hear you say, uh, you know, you want to talk about the process of it, and it, I feel like the process of it. Is is so important um, to the understanding of it, and we're trying to put that on the page as well for you to see through the story, the process. But whenever we have a chance to actually talk um, directly and express the process, it's always great. Or just to get the feedback. What we love is having these conversations, and you tell us, okay, when I saw this, here's how I felt, because it still happens to us. <laughs> Even when we go back and we're like, okay, we're, we're getting the artwork and everything and we start reading and we're doing that review. We're like, whoa, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so it's almost like a, um, 
uh, when a movie comes out and, you know, the actor and you're wondering how the people are going to receive, you know, the movie. And, and it is a joy to get the feedback because, you know, a comedian tell jokes and they might think it's funny, but if nobody laughs, then <laughs> I guess it ain't funny. You know? <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, that's, that's the great thing about, uh, you know, release day, new comic book day is you're going to get all the people telling you, you know, positive and negative. Cause whenever, whenever you first reached out, I was kind of like, look at the title and the cover. And I was like, this looks cool. I'll read it, you know, but I don't know how it's going to connect with me, you know? Mm -hmm. And more importantly, what it would look like for um, a white guy to stand there and talk to two black guys about their book, you know, like this. And then after I read it that first time, I was like, oh, no, like this is getting to the heart of something. And it it definitely feels like very well grounded in a way that it makes it easy to connect with, regardless of what what side you're on somewhere along that that margin, you know. And so I think it's really cool that you were able to put this together in a way that that isn't like attacking, but it's, it's really more thoughtful and thought provoking, you know, it's not done in a shock jock kind of way, but in a way that really makes you think, you know, you were talking about crash earlier. And one of the, the cooler scenes to me was um, whenever Ludacris and uh, the yeah. other guy are walking down the street and, you know, the chick, <laughs> yeah, you know, like the way that that whole scene plays and flips so quick, like that's thought provoking. And I feel like that's what, um, black cotton has done is like it presents this in such a way that it actually makes me think about it from all those different perspectives you know like she was wrong in the first place but she was right the whole time you know and <laughs> this that and the other you know like everybody was right and everybody was wrong and um, instead of like trying to create this void where the gray can exist instead what it does is kind of just like put you in that gray zone and makes you like you're already caught in it now you need to find the margins you know yes yes <laughs> Very well said. It is. It is very well said. Because that's, that's what we want. That And that yeah. goes back to the reason of our uh, no color. You know? It, it, we, we wanted no distractions. <laughs> because yeah. automatically, we didn't want people to be looking at shades of color and then all of a sudden their mind go to, you know, a whole nother land. No. Stay right here. Yeah. And see yeah. what it is. Yeah, it definitely felt to me like um, there's almost like a, a brilliant use of negative, uh, negative space there or something. Because like when she comes and talks to him in that office, like oh. in my head, it's just like so quiet. Like you could hear a pin drop in that room, you know, like there's a lot of scenes like that where the air of it all, you know, um, whenever they're on the airplane, you know, like I can hear that hum of the engines and then just like her voice on the phone, you know, like. There's something beautiful in the way it's done in black and white that really just like makes me zone in and focus. Like if it was in a movie, it would be all quiet around me because I'm supposed to hear and focus on what they're saying, you know? So there's a lot going on in the artwork that I really love about it too, you know? And then again, like you said, the black and white just kind of like strips away all the distractions and it really pulls you into the story and what's going on with these characters. That's so cool for you to say. And it's such a <laughs> testament to, I mean, well, one, to uh, Marco and him bringing this to life. Um, and it's a testament to uh, the comic book medium, like um, why this is so important as a comic book versus a prose story um, um, or a poem or, I, I mean, it's, it's, it, it's, it's birth in the comic book medium because I mean at the end of the day human beings process data through images and when that happens and, and all these things that you just said you know a lot of stuff is happening to us mentally and and and, and emotionally because our mental uh, is obviously connected to our emotions you know the, the, the whole chemistry of it, the whole biology of it and so all this stuff is happening to us um, because of this visual story that's being told and it's just such a testament to the comic book, the power of the comic book. That's mm -hmm. what it is. And, it, and, it, and, and, yeah. and what I'll so, say, um, we're still uh, in awe of the retail stores. We got what three? Um, we got three exclusive covers coming out from you know different stores. You know, red. The comic side, book. 
actually yeah. you know, uh, been like, hold up. <laughs> this is, you know, something powerful that we want to be a part of. And and what were you going to say, uh, Brian? Oh, shout out to Farside, Santorium, and Hive Comics. I mean, yeah, you know, yeah like on the exclusive. And um, we know two of the, the artists, Ryan Brown, who, who, who just did The Last Ronin, uh, he's oh, yeah. doing the, the far side cover. Um, they have 200 limited. They've already sold over 100. Um, you know, we have Hive, Hive Comics, and we're talking with the artist, Ned, Neil, Neil Nelson, uh, constructing that. Um, and Santorium, you know, is beginning the process now. It's just phenomenal. Yeah. I, I'm sorry to jump in, but I, I just want to shout Hive did that. Yes, yeah. yes, they did the Ash Can, yeah. So, so we like I, going back to something I said earlier. You have the collector spirit in me, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, so anytime there's like a limited edition, especially number one, I'm I probably every day I'm on eBay <laughs> or going somewhere <laughs> looking for a CGC hashtag number one, you know. <laughs> <laughs> variant edition or something so so to have black cotton come to the world with exclusive phenomenal artwork we're talking one is going to be in uh they say metal one's going to be in fall you got the yeah. ash can you have these limited versions coming out that tells me that the world is also receiving it in the positive light, which is awesome because these stores are they're they're putting their name behind it. They're also, you know, uh uh also word of mouth saying, hey, you need to read this comic book. Yeah. So so uh, uh we we're just still in awe that the world is receiving it. Uh our far side is what in Canada, you know. So, yeah. so, but, now we're talking international, and we had another comment from uh, uh, the UK uh, yesterday. So it, it is a beautiful thing to be received positive and in the way that it's supposed to be received. Absolutely. Yeah, that's phenomenal. I mean, like you said, in your collector spirit, you know, you, you got to have those exclusive and variants, you know, that's what people are looking for. And, and that's awesome to me because. Um, I don't know. I really like, um, like fan art and stuff, you know, and to me, that's one of the things that covers are so great for is like, you get all these different artists that aren't necessarily the interiors or they aren't people that you've usually seen draw these characters and stuff, you know? So that's what makes the uh, variant issue so interesting is how many different artists you get to see these characters rendered in, um, and different styles and everything, you know? So that to me is really cool that y'all have a couple of variants. Cause I want to see what these characters look like outside of just like what we get in this first book. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. It's so cool. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm humbled by it. I'm a fan. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know how it sounds to be a fan of, you know, something that's part of your own creation, but I feel, I, I feel outside of it sometimes, um, which allows me to really step back and just, appreciate the process and appreciate um, the part that I'm playing to contribute uh, to the whole creation, which is to me, you know, bigger than who I am. And uh, so it's really cool. And I think what you're saying is is, is spot on um, about how, you know, the different artists rendering um, that allows for me uh, to also step back and to separate from it and to appreciate and to have those feelings um, where I'm not, where I'm tied to it, but, I, but, you know, it, it, it's good to also step back and look at it, you know, and, and see. Are y'all fans, uh, fans of bitter root? Oh, oh yeah. Uh, yes. yes <laughs> definitely. Oh, I love bitter root. Oh my God. Yeah. It's so good. Uh, <laughs> that, that's one thing I really, yes. That's one thing I really loved about like the um, big, the big summer special, the red summer special. Yes. The way that they had like different artists tackle it mm -hmm. and how it all kept it stayed in universe, but you got to see these characters in different styles. You got to see 
Um, it very much made like the the Asian um, the Asian group seem like they were very different from the bitter right. root family, you know. Um, and to me, like that, oh my god, that that issue was so cool just to see everything rendered in different ways and different styles. You know, it built out the world in a really cool way. Absolutely, absolutely. I I agree one hundred percent. Like um, what uh um, oh my goodness, like what they've done with that book, that team, which is very similar, like the. The construct of that team is very similar, you know, to the construct that we have, you know, with the two writers, um, Chuck Brown and, and uh, of course, David F. Walker. David F. Walker, yes. I mean, and, and then you bring in uh, Sanford Green, right? And it's mm -hmm. like, it's, 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 it's magic. And so we kind of, it's, you know, not on purpose, but, it, you know, we have kind of a same the same construct and for them to have created this different world uh it, it's amazing it's, a, it's an amazing read um and i'm excited to see that you know adapted on to the screen because right. that's on the way too with ryan coogler i believe is directing it too so yeah well i know so, he's yeah. attached as a producer i don't know if they've signed a director yet um but i'm excited for it i are they going animation or live action? Do you know? I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah. I could see like a really cool gritty animation working, like animation style working for it. But I would also kind of like to see it live action. I think that would be really interesting to see how the action plays out in live action because yeah. there's some really cool stuff in that book. Oh, oh my yeah. God. Like the, the level of creativity blows my mind. <laughs> I mean, they, they went to a whole nother plane. They went to hell. Right and lived and came back and like now they're even oh my god like <laughs> I don't know it's it's stellar the way that they put it all together you know like you mm -hmm. you have like your boroughs in New York and stuff mm -hmm. and then like now they've been to hell and they've been to the south and they've yeah. come back and uh, they killed my boy Johnny Ray like just as I really <laughs> came around to him oh my god but he might not be dead there's still a whole other world out there you know like. Uh, Bitter Root, uh, that's one of the books that really like certified my interest in like um, like indie and co like comic books in general. You know, I was reading Power Rangers is what brought me back in. And so I was like, oh, nice. I was getting into the Power Rangers comics. And then week <laughs> after week going to the store, all of a sudden Bitter Root popped up after like a year and a half or something. You know, I was like, I don't know. I like those monsters. That looks cool. And I, so I was on it from number one. And I was just like, this is incredible, you know. Uh, I made my wife drive around with me all over the city trying to find um, one of the B covers for uh, uh -huh. issue number five. Uh, with oh, wow. Berg. oh, I love Berg and like his his origin story and the Red Summer special. I cry uh -huh. every time. Oh, it's so good. It is a great story. I, you're spot yeah. on. Um, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I love, I absolutely love that. And it's indie comics, you know, it's... A, one a testament to comic books, but then a testament to indie comics and what uh, the independent creators are are doing um, in the medium is phenomenal, and it, it, it's it's a different. You know, I don't know what exactly uh, this age would is going to is going to be called. You know, when we look back, uh, mm -hmm. or even if they have already kind of developed an age title for this yet but yeah. indie comics has um really led a huge charge um in what the comic book medium and the comic book industry and the comic book scene is right now um and while i do enjoy you know my marvel and my dc right. here and there you know i select titles that i'm on with those i definitely read more indie comics um, and it's just the, it's like a golden age of storytelling with indie comics. And it's, it's great. It's great. Well, and it's cool to, to try to be a part of that. Yeah. And, and, and I think it leads to just how society is right now. Um, society, you know, when it has been going in uh, a certain direction for so long, sooner or later you get that um, hunger for something new, something different. And, and what happens is the big ones can get stuck in a rut. 
of, okay, this has worked for years. So we're going to continue to do this. And before they know it, because they're not listening to the people, before they know it, the people have shifted. <laughs> yeah. And and the people are like, okay, well, if you're not going to give it to us, then we're going to go here. And all of a sudden, the people have literally ran to Indies because that's where they're getting their fix. They're getting, you know, okay, we want to be challenged. We're getting, we want to go somewhere else other than this common lane. Yeah. And uh, it, it, it is now they're playing catch up. Mm -hmm. The majors are now playing catch up, trying to uh, get and grab hold of what the Indies have been doing and uh, providing. And, and we we love it. And like Brian said, we're happy to be a part of it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we, we don't want to be the status quo. We don't want to uh, provide what's already out there. We want to provide something new. And uh, that's what Black Cotton is uh, definitely bringing. We're bringing something new uh, uh, with a different perspective that people can uh, actually gravitate toward, enjoy. And also, uh, you, you, you might actually learn something about yourself. Oh, man. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, y'all said that it's uh, six issues. So. Um, what made you decide we go with, to go with six issues, and what what's the story behind the six issues? I get like, what's the story arc there? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Brian. Um, all right, appreciate it. Um, so we wanted to tell um, this one story in this reality to start with um, that hinges on uh, this shooting tragedy. Um, we thought it was a a a great way to introduce um, the black cotton reality. Um, we do have like in our talks and our outlining and our planning, like we, we have this as an ongoing series, but it was it, um, with some, some offshoots and, you know, some, some, what we think is some really cool stuff down the road, um, some cool storytelling. Um, but what we wanted to do was to really, capture this story um and we knew that we needed to do it in six issues um you know it couldn't be done in four or five it was a a, a traditional six issue story arc um that focuses on zion and through zion you know we are are introduced to uh, his family and the nightingales uh who are who are the family of the young women Elizabeth, who is shot. Um, and so everything uh, is hinges on that event. And that's the vehicle. I feel like I've used that word several times now, but that's the vehicle that we are, are using uh, to introduce readers to this black cotton reality. Um, and, and we want at the end of six for there to be a, a, a satisfaction, um, a resolution to this story um, but to understand that, you know, it's it's a whole reality, it's a whole universe, it's a whole world um, that, you know, that, that spawns from there. Uh, but, we, but it's important to have that closure to this story that's in these characters' lives. Right. But then it goes on. So, and as, I, you know, uh, we, we actually, you know, we've already uh, planned out and everything to 12 you know, issues. And so it's ongoing, but the resolution of this topic, mm -hmm. we'll do it in six. And then we're going to uh, challenge you on something else from seven to 12 and continue to do that. Yeah. That, I mean, that's really interesting. I would love to see it, uh, you know, continue to go forward as long as it has the steam, you know, so I'm glad to know that y'all have plenty of, um, you know, ammunition in the chamber ready to go <laughs> they uh, keep picking them up because I've really enjoyed this first issue. I, I hope that's come through, you know, but I, I really like it. I think yeah. it's, it's Thank really you. cool. And it's doing uh, something different, you know, like you said, it's hard to explain, but just something different. It's not just looking at this issue through a singular lens and it's still like 
a lot of fun and an interesting world to explore. Um, I like the promises that you made about down the road, how the whole world will unfold, you know, as we look at like how different aspects are changed by just the small changes you made and, and the history of America, you know, like that's, <laughs> that's really interesting to me because it kind of gives me more surprise to know that there's more coming and trying to guess what that is. So I think you are doing an awesome job. Uh, when can we pick it up? Where can we find you guys at? Um, all your plugs, hashtags, whatever you <laughs> use. <laughs> Well, um, Patrick Foreman, yeah, you, uh, we got a, uh, an Instagram account. So, uh, definitely if you look up black kind, uh, comment, you'll, you know, uh, find us there, black kind mindset, black kind universe. Uh, we got a Facebook account, uh, black kind comment. So definitely, uh, go to Facebook, like it, um, you can find me, Patrick D. Foreman, on Instagram and on uh, uh, Facebook. So, uh, and if you Google uh, Patrick Foreman, he's able. I'll pop up too. You'll see <laughs> gospel artist, award-winning yeah. gospel artist, <laughs> award-winning. So, so if you uh, definitely uh, 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 love good music and uh, good spiritual music. Definitely uh just Google my name and it'll pop up and you'll be blessed. Um uh, so uh definitely uh hit us up and uh Brian, go ahead, man. Yeah, I'm uh I'm I'm always on the Twitterverse. I, I, I like Twitter. I really do like Twitter. Like I'm a fan of Twitter. Um so I'm the I'm, same way, so <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> and on the Twitterverse, uh in the Twitterverse, uh Brian L. Hawkins uh, on IG, Brian Hawkins writes. Um, I have a, a Facebook um, business page, writer's page, Brian Hawkins writes. Um, and uh, yeah, Black Cotton is going to be out um, February 10th. Uh, the FOC, you know, has already, you know, it's, it's closed. But look, here's what I'm going to say. You know, call your local counselor and see. You know, the the, the diamond code is DEC um, 201650. Uh, mm -hmm. See if they can still pre order it. If your comic book store cannot pre order it, um, then you can hit up Scout and Scout um, will uh, send your retailer, your comic book store, um, however many copies they want. So they do do di direct. To retailers, right? So, so um, still, uh, cause here's what Scout told us. Remember, Brian? They said, um, go to the retailers, and they can't order from Diamond anymore, but the retailer can order from Scout direct. So all they have to do is you still go straight to your uh, local comic book store, tell them you want black cotton and tell them to reach out to Scout and Scout will send them a personal email, the retail store so they can order it straight from Scout. And um, definitely I'm telling you, you want to get the first issue definitely of Black Cotton because it's gonna be something that the world is gonna be looking for. And uh, we're, not gonna, we're not gonna do too many, you know, cause I'm a collector. So, so <laughs> It's the first print. It's gonna be a low print. It's gonna be whoever gets it. So get your copy because uh, it's, it's it's definitely something that uh, will entertain you, bless you, and it will definitely be something that you want to keep for years to come. Right on. In Farside Comics, they're actually selling it on online as well um yeah. directly through their store and you can get the ryan brown a uh, virgin full wrap cover that he did um and have have comics um i believe like the second week in january will also be selling theirs online and so will santorium um probably not the second week but before the release right and all of them have uh low counts so definitely you want to hop on that because far side is almost sold out with theirs. They did, it wasn't 200, 250 uh, that they did, but the first day that they did a blind claim on Instagram, 130 of them went the first 
day. They hadn't even seen the cover the first day. So they're, they're already almost gone. So you definitely want to uh, get your copy before that's gone because that's going to be a hot piece. It is phenomenal, the picture uh, that Ryan, Ryan did, Ryan Brown, phenomenal guy. We definitely want to do more work with him in the future. And that's something that we're looking forward to. We're looking forward to talking to you, Ryan, uh, <laughs> you know, for uh, issue two, three, four. Just Let's just keep this thing going. But the collaboration yeah and talking with the world we want to keep this going this is this is what we love right here this is why we do it yeah and on that note weren't y'all just on uh bearded comic bros channel yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, we were. So, so now that everybody's watched my video y'all can go watch his because <laughs> honestly like that video popped up the other day i think this morning it came up actually and uh, I said, I'm not going to watch this because it's going to take my uh, time talking <laughs> with y'all. So, <laughs> so I've been putting it off till I finish talking with y'all so I wouldn't cross streams. <laughs> oh, that's cool. That's good. That's good. Yeah. That's cool. I really yeah, like his cool. content, though. He's a really cool guy. So everybody oh, go yeah. check out that video now that you've watched mine. <laughs> uh, there you go. Absolutely.